Hello and welcome to my first video that I like to talk about my film assignments and essays, letting you guys learn and see my liking and inspiration on films. Today we are going to talk about my favorite cinematographer, John Alcott. What's so unique and what makes John Alcott one of the kind is how he shows us these memorable camera and lighting effects to allow us to just feel the suspense it mostly carries as John does this in an artistic, beautiful way to play with our emotions. Oh, bliss. Bliss and heaven. Oh, it was gorgeousness and gorgeousity made flesh. His overall style gives us a futuristic modern feel. 2001 A Space Odyssey shows how his camera and lighting makes you think that you're watching a movie from the 90s or 2000s. But since it's from 1968, it is far too beautiful with John showing us how space really looks in his stunning vistas. John's camera movement sucks the audience into the story. A Clockwork Orange, for example, from the start of the movie where Alex DeLarge and his group are sitting down in the club while the camera moves away to show that Alex is comfortable in the room while he feels open with his violent feelings. Also in The Shining, where the camera dollies in close to Jack's face to tell that he is building up his rage and insanity. Wendy, I have let you fuck up my life so far, but I am not gonna let you fuck this up. Alcott uses colors vividly, having the colors pop out and give it some meaning like Jack from The Shining, where the color of the ballroom, where the ghosts are having a party is orange and red to symbolize that Jack is surrounded by death and want to consume the hate he has for his family. In fact, you see orange and red on the floor in some places in the movie and the hotel to show the whole family is surrounded by death and hate. Barry Lyndon also uses color symbolically. One example is the opening where the two men are going to shoot each other and the camera is in the distance. The foreground is green grass and trees to show escape and freedom, but a brutal gray brick wall in the middle says yet again death is on the horizon. John's format is mostly 35mm, which you see in Barry Lyndon and A Clockwork Orange, and sometimes 65mm in a 2001 A Space Odyssey. Kubrick and Alcott made a choice of shooting with spherical lenses and projecting a 1.375 to 1 aspect ratio. This creates a boxier image that Alcott preferred for his compositions. Very refreshing, sir. Very refreshing. John's lighting and shadows makes you feel like you're there and feels like you have to relate to the light and shadows of making you be there. A cold and comfortable and uncomfortable feel from the shining because of the light from the sunlight is reflecting in the hotel in some scenes and some using the hotel lights to make you feel like you are in the hotel yourself. The shadows that the hotel room gives off this negative feel and paranormal. From Barry Lyndon, the lights were mostly reflected by candles, sunlight, and moonlight, giving us beautiful shots from the outdoors to make you feel like you're in and relate to that time zone. Well, it's very, uh, homey. The lenses were produced by Zeiss for NASA for very low light deep space photography. So 
they were never designed really to be used in cinema. So Stanley and John had to make them fit a camera of his which Stanley owns. The only lens that that camera would go on to of a sound camera was a type of BNC. The only way they could find it would work, but it meant not destroying the camera so much, but re reconstructing it because of the lens. This lens is for the other movies, but it started off in Barry Lyndon. Oh, here comes my favorite part of this music. John has been working with Stanley Kubrick for his four movies, but has met and worked with other directors like Stuart Cooper for Little Malcolm and Overlord. John also worked with Roger Spudiswood on Terror Train, which had bad writing and bad directing that maybe made John want to quit, I assume, but at least he had tried his best to help Roger from making the film. Hey, 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 take it easy, man. What are you doing? Oh my god. John Alcott won awards for his cinematography. His first award is the 1973 BAFTA award nomination for A Clockwork Orange. He also got his first and last award from the Oscars for Barry Lyndon. His last award is from the 1984's BAFTA award nomination for Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan, The Lord of the Apes. I'd like to thank everybody, especially the members of the Academy, for even thinking about bestowing this honor upon me. I'd like to thank my unit for putting up with me, and Warner Brothers, and least but not last, Stanley Kubrick. These are some of the reasons why I find John Alcott to be such an inspiring cinematographer. He makes me want to do cinematography myself. How he conveys an idea to make it more beautiful with meaning fascinates me. My favorite work that he mastered are in A Clockwork Orange and Barry Lyndon. Looking back on the movies, I will imagine what John has to do with for Stanley E. Kubrick to share these ideas of camera shots that are beautiful and important for the audience to see and remember the shots in our lives. Even when I feel connected to how Alex DeLarge is feeling when the government is controlling his violent urges that makes him sick of wanting to think about violent actions, and with Jack in The Shining where he starts to get possessed by the life that he used to have and I assume reincarnated as another person and comes back to the hotel to get the feelings that that his other life has which makes Jack go mad. From those two movies, John Alcott showed me what these characters physically and emotionally feel and act. That's what I like about John. He is talented with his skills and that's what makes him unique because you never seen any movies of how cinematography works than John Alcott. Talented, inspiring, everyone will remember his work, a one of the kind and he will be missed. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave a like and comment to help my channel grow. We are almost 500 subscribers, so please subscribe if you like what I do. I'll make more videos about my inspiration on films and why I like them. That's it for now, and have a good day.